Hey dudes. So, Grayson Cobb here with uh, GraysonCobb.com. It's my site. Check it out. Good stuff. So last summer, I attempted to break the Appalachian Trail through hike unsupported record, which was held by Matt Kirk. Now it's held by Heather Anderson. Uh, attempted it, failed it. 700 miles in, a tour my calf, but. I did pull off something that I think is kind of cool. I carried only three and a half pounds of gear in a 10 liter pack. So that's kind of unusual. A lot of people have been kind of like trying to figure out how the heck you could do that. So I figured what I'd do today is go through all my gear and uh, explain what I used it for, what I did to it to make it that light, and um, pack it all up at the end to show you that it all does fit, believe it or not. So let's get started. Um, start with the shoes. Hiker is the most important thing in the entire world. Um, I went with Saucony Peregrine 5 shoes. Probably wouldn't do it again. Uh, they weren't very durable up in Maine when they were just soaking wet all day every day. I think my feet were wet for like the first two weeks. Um, started ripping up on the sides. I did pull out some super glue and try to like do some damage control and get them back together. Uh, reason I chose them though was they're pretty light and they have uh, a foot plate on the bottom which in all my training hikes made it so much easier because anyone who's done like a 40 mile day knows by the end the thing that hurts the most are your feet. So with these shoes though honestly I didn't even like hardly feel that my feet hurt. Foot plate, it's like Kevlar or something, keeps out all the little points on rocks that you step on. Next up, socks, darn tough socks. Um, company up in Vermont makes some epic kick-ass socks. Things are like honestly borderline indestructible. Seriously, like if you get a hole in these things, they will replace them for free. Kid you not. Um, wool socks, love them. Love them. I pretty much wear them everywhere now. Um, had these guys for my hike, so that's the socks. Uh, shorts, I wore some BOA running shorts. I think you can get these guys on Amazon, and they are like two and a half ounces. They're the lightest shorts that I could find. Only problem is they're running shorts, and they have a one inch inseam. So if you're like super well endowed, I would not recommend it. Um, then for shirt, I had the Arcteryx Sarix SS shirt. I think this thing is two and a half ounces, like polyester, incredibly light, uh, very, very comfortable, and surprisingly durable. Loved it. Jacket, Mountain Hardware, Ghost Whisperer Wind Jacket, one and a half ounces. This is the old model, no hood, no pockets, half a zipper. Um, not real waterproof at all, just made for wind. So, just a little bit of extra to uh, keep me warm on the days where this wasn't necessary. Um, this is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer down jacket, like seven or eight ounces or something. Awesome, awesome jacket, kept me warm. I think I, so the coldest it got down to was like 28, and then I dealt with some horrible wind and cold temperatures climbing Madison and the Whites, and um, had this guy on, and that helped a ton. Uh, only alterations I made were cutting out the little like bungee jawstring at the bottom and um, changing out the zipper ties for just something a little bit lighter. But that was it. And cutting tags off, which if you don't do that, you're a fool. Okay, clothes. Buff. This was my like scarf to block out the wind and like my stocking cap and um, a rag, because one morning I woke up with a slug, a dead slug smeared across my face, so this helped get, get that clean. Um, head net up in Maine, holy moly, oh my god. Mosquito Central, I don't think I would have survived without this thing. Awesome, awesome stuff. And then also, another use for a head net, which I hadn't thought of, is when you're the first hiker in the morning, you're constantly wiping, wiping through spider webs and like caterpillar webs or whatever, uh, inchworms and stuff like that. So wearing this thing helped prevent me from getting those all over my face. Sea to Summit head net, only alteration I made to this was 
cutting off the little jawstring and uh, fixing it permanent because I figured my head wasn't going to change sizes anytime soon. Clothes! Compression sleeves. I didn't wear these while hiking um, just to keep them clean and because I honestly don't think you need them. They're to like keep your circulation going. So no, no use for them during hikes. Um, sleeping though, holy moly, to be able to wear these and wake up and not feel like I aged 50 years was aw absolutely awesome. And they're, they're just the little calf ones, so not the full socks. Um, I think that's it for my clothes. So we're going to get on to shelter. Polycro ground sheet from Gossamer Gear. I think this thing was like a little over one ounce once I cut it down to the size that I needed. Incredibly durable, especially for being the thinness of a grocery store plastic bag. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. Great for like setting up camp when it's ground soaking wet and not having to get soaked myself. This is, excuse me, this is my homemade pal, uh, Cuban fiber poncho tarp. So this is my rain jacket and my tarp. And I made this from material from Z-Pax, awesome company, really Cuban fiber is like the way to go. If you can afford it, or if you, if you want to make the investment rather, then um, Cuban fiber is some incredible stuff. And then I used for steaks the little Terra Nova one gram skewers, titanium skewers. Um, these things are great for, I mean... <laughs> One gram steaks, they worked incredibly well. I didn't have a single one pop out on me. Uh, the thing about my like super lightweight setup was that the fra most fragile thing was the Cuban fiber. So like the steaks, I didn't have to worry about those breaking because the Cuban fiber would rip long before that. Um, sleeping pad, I used the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. Only alteration I made to this was just like cutting down the edging a little bit. This is the shorty pad. I'm a shorty, so I fit fine on it like seven ounces, eight ounces or something. Awesome, awesome pad, incredibly durable for looking like it's made out of a balloon. My favorite piece of gear ever. I just want to sleep in this all night. This is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma. Short, slim, 900 fill, down, sleeping in a cocoon of heavenly fluff. Um, eight. A little over eight ounces and it's 50 degree quilt and I took it down to sub freezing so like 28 degrees was the coldest night and uh, stayed pretty warm and slept through the night so I love it I think they drastically understate their temperature ratings uh, I think every through hiker in the world every hiker in the world should have one of these because it's the most awesome thing ever um, a little trash bag just to keep my gown dry, and then a compression sack to compress the down. And this is the Sea to Summit. This is like the smallest sill nylon Sea to Summit compression sack you can get. I use the Black Diamond Ion headlamp. A lot of people wonder why I didn't go with something a little bit smaller. I mean, this is like a 1.3 ounce headlamp, so you can't go that much smaller. Um, but I wanted like an actual functional headlamp because, I mean, most of the most days I was waking up before the sun rose and hiking till after dark. So I wanted something that I could actually use on a daily basis, not have to worry about the little tiny battery draining in 30 seconds. Um, I love this thing. Only alteration I made to this was cutting down the um, excess cord. Um, little trinkets and stuff in a plastic bag, my wallet, which was just a rubber band wrapped around some cash, a credit card, and my ID. And then I had my toothbrush, which uh, ultralight hikers are like always bragging about what they did to their toothbrush. I just took a normal one and cut the handle off, so just use your fingers. Um, and then there's a little plastic bag that I stored toothpaste dots in, which were just, I would take like a piece of aluminum foil, squirt out a line of toothpaste, let it dry for a couple days, and then cut them up into little pea-sized pieces and uh, put like two a day, or two for each day in here. And I had all these in my resupply, so I would only need to carry, like, maybe max it eight at a time. This is my patch kit for my Thermarest sleeping pad. Never had to use it, but um, just an alcohol prep pad and a little patch in there. <laughs> deep. Deep. Don't go to Maine without it. 100% deep. 
like 0.3 ounces of it saved my life. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. Holy moly, clouds, mosquitoes. I'll never sleep again. Um, what's next? Trekking poles. So these were the poles for my tarp and my trekking poles. And uh, they're the Black Diamond Ultra Distance poles, which are awesome. And I only problem I had with them, so they're carbon fiber, but they didn't actually break on me. Only problem that I had was that the uh, joint, this little joint popped out. And uh, I had to gorilla glue it back together, but some really nice ladies up in Massachusetts helped me out with that. Um, a little bit of duct tape for like blisters and uh, on-site gear repair and stuff. I did stitch the handle together because I, my hand wasn't going to change in size, so I cut off the excess fabric and stitched that together. Um, last but certainly not least, iPhone 6. This had uh, the AT Hiker app on it and um, all trail info of like road crossings, little GPS map, food or water rather, um, shelters, everything was on here. And I also used it to listen to audiobooks and music and talk to my parents sometimes when I was having a tough time. Um, headphones, little iPhone headphones so I could walk and talk at the same time. And my case, my OtterBox professional case, totally waterproof, but like 0.1 ounces, little Ziploc bag. And then this is my pack. This is my beautiful, wonderful, custom fitted everything I butchered the crap out of it pack. So alterations with this one, I turned, I made it so that it wasn't adjustable. Oh, it's a Solomon 10 plus three skin pro. It's made for ultra runners, but yeah, I used it for a through ride attempt. Um, stitch the shoulder pads or shoulder straps together because they were adjustable. So that dropped like honestly probably an ounce cutting all that off. And then um, just kind of like made some other adjustments and just cut off excess crap that I didn't need, little pieces of fabric and uh, the place where you could store a water bladder, which I was using bottles and didn't really need a water bladder. And then these guys were for two half liter water bottles. And I just used this like, little flimsy ones that you get at the grocery store that are super cheap, super flimsy and incredibly light, um, but way more durable than I would have ever given them credit for use the same ones for my the 700 miles that I was out there. Um, and for water treatment, I used bleach. So um, had great experience with it. Uh, on one of my shakeout hikes on the Bent Mackay Trail, used a little too much bleach and had some GI issues. But other than that, it worked fantastic. And um, I think we've covered all my gear, to be honest. I know it's not that much. Um, that's everything. That's literally everything that I carried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all how it all gets packed up. So first off, I'm going to pack my clothes up. Um, put it in a little compression sack. This thing is the coolest. I kid you not. So every morning, and have to do this. Most people, most people have a little pack explosion when they show up at a shelter or camp, but mine was literally take everything out of my pack and then put it all back in there. But it really doesn't take too long, as you'll see. You can watch the little timer, watch the, the um, video count on the bottom to see how fast it's going, but it might take a little bit longer because of the video. So putting the down jacket in there now. Um, I really, every morning I would put everything I could in here. Normally I would not start hiking with my down jacket, no matter how cold it was, because as you all probably know, when you start hiking, you warm up pretty quick. It'll be like 20 degrees. And with that pack on your back, and hiking up huge mountains, you get warm pretty quickly. So I've, now I've got my buff in here, my wind jacket, and now I'm putting my head net in there. Starting this again, because the camera died. So, all right, where were we? All right, so got my quilt, uh, my down jacket, everything packed up in here. 
and um, wrap it up in the plastic bag just to make sure everything stays dry on those rainy days as in it was every single day that it was raining. Alright, slip that thing in there. That kind of provides a frame for my pack because it's totally frameless. Alright, I kind of rolled my um, sleeping pad up already and uh, pulled it, sucked to some of the air out and slip that in there. Did that just to save some time. Okie doke. Uh, um, put in the polycro ground sheet in there, compression sleeves, and at this point I kind of just like shove crap in the in the sides just to straighten it out and give it some some support. Um, poncho tarp. Then I get my platypus, water bladder, eat, and wallet and stuff in this little back pocket here. And I've got some room for food. So if you can see that, it's um it's actually pretty pretty good amount of room in there. This is my food bag, but I would ever actually keep the food stored in the food bag, or rarely rather. For the hike because it just wouldn't pack very well having that huge bag in this little bitty pack. So what I do every morning is just kind of shove bars in there. And this is about six pounds of food, which is actually more than I took on my entire trip. My, the maximum that I had was five pounds, or like five and a half pounds. I was leaving, leaving Katahdin. And I remember actually packing up at the AT Lodge in Millinocket, and it was a little bit of a tight squeeze, but everything fit in there without having to expand it to a um, to a 13 liter pack with that little zipper. All right, so main compartment's full, but as you'll see, well, it's not really full. They have a couple side pockets on this pack that are really expandable and kind of add or um, part of that 10 liters because the main compartment is pretty tiny. And um, so side compartments here, this is where I would store all my food for the day. And we're just going to shove some typical like, candy, chocolate, bars and stuff in there. That's normally what would go in. And this is just a little snacky snack. And um, then I moved my phone. My phone and my headphones would go in the side pocket. And uh, just give me something to listen to during the day, keep me a little distracted. And my headlamp would go in the side pocket. Now, if I. If it were cold for some reason, or raining, or whatever, I would have clothes that I could throw in those side pockets, or I could throw them underneath the shoulder straps. So, give me a little bit of extra storage. Kind of sloppy throwing them in the shoulder straps, but it got the job done. And then, um, these little straps right here are kind of for compression, since this is a running vest. And it was nice for me because it gave me a little bit more support and turned the pack into a little bit more solid of a frame in addition to making it not bounce up and down. So I managed to grab some water bottles. Um, that were in my refrigerator. So these are the exact, I mean, same type of bottles that I carried on my trip. Just these like little crappy plastic ones. And uh, that's really it. I mean, it's not, it doesn't take that long to pack it up. And um, it looks a little lumpy, but that's just because I did a rush job. But really, it's, I mean, it's probably at about 10 pounds now. Six pounds of food, three and a half pounds of gear, and then about two pounds of water. And you saw it, and that's everything on my list that went in there. And it's all accurately measured and all set to go, so. This is my three and a half pound base weight, 10 pound pack, 10 liter pack that 
I attempt to Appalachian Trail through Hay Quit. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll check out some more of my stuff on GraysonCobb.com. Um, little videos, blog posts, stuff like that. And um, uh, once again, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you soon.